me in Salonis community and welcome back to Celesphere here in Munich, Germany. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined for these fantastic 24 segments with Rob Stretche. Rob, I feel like our processes are getting optimized just by being here today, don't you agree? This has been one of the most efficient things. I think we've been mapped <laughs> and modeled and now we're being optimized as we go through. So this is fantastic. <laughs> yes, and, and speaking of optimization and, and mapping and modeling, we've got Dan here from NHS. Thank you for joining us all the way from the UK today. Dan, how are you doing? I'm good. Really good. Good bright to be here. Uh, amazing uh, environment, amazing atmosphere. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, you can really feel the energy. Yeah. You've been on the stage. Huge day for you. Data-driven productivity for elective care. Tell the audience what you do day in and day out for this fantastic and probably cognitively challenging job. I, I do quite a lot. Um, so I have a national role, which is data driven productivity, which is across the uh, NHS England, working with elective care. But uh, my primary role is director of performance and informatics at a hospital in Coventry, Morwickshire, University Hospitals, Coventry, Morwickshire. Uh, second biggest major trauma centre in the country. So uh, I have a very big job. So, so the processes and getting them optimized, we've been talking a little bit about healthcare and getting people in, seen, and moving them through the entire stay. Is that a lot of what you're working on and how you're getting you're involved with, or what are the processes that you help actually understand and gain transparency to? So if we go back to our uh, original journey of process mining with Salonis, uh, specifically at Coventry and Warwickshire. We focus on outpatients, and I think that there's a, a, a view that a patient comes into the hospital, has their appointment, and then goes. Um, using process mining, what we realise is that's, that's just not how it is. There's uh, thousands of different variants and different processes and different pathways that patients go through. So uh, back in October last year, process mining allowed us to see that if you had an appointment tomorrow, we would send you a text message today, and invariably, patients wouldn't turn up tomorrow, and then we were like, why is that? And the process mining allowed us to look at reaction. So by looking at reaction, we was able to move our communication with our patients to day 14 prior to their appointment and day four, and we started to see that people were turning up and being more um, obviously engaged with the organisation, and uh, we call it a did not attend, which is a DNA. Um, we, we used to have about 1,800 per week. Well, that reduced down to about 700 per week. What meant was, on our waiting list, we were seeing about seven to 900 patients per week more, and our waiting list, as a result, would reduce. So any patient that was then receiving them two text messages were then coming into the hospital and not uh, and attending their appointment and not not showing up. So um, just from a simple, simple change, but using slowness and process mining to have a look at reaction time for our patients. At the uh, Coventry and Warwick Hospital, we've looked at patients through from outpatients to theatres or surg uh, the surgical uh, space, and we've looked at all different aspects of, we have mothers and fathers on the waiting list that have children. How do we couple them appointments with um, the family members and joint appointments? So it means, actually, instead of you coming in tomorrow and then your child coming in in three months time, how can we work together to bring them appointments together and make things seamless? But one of our biggest focuses in the NHS is not necessarily the monetary value, but how do we improve our patient experience, the, the journey that they're going on, how do we make that the, the most effective and efficient uh, for those that are obviously using healthcare uh, at a time that, that they, obviously they don't really want to be in a hospital, so it's, it's great for our patients. Those are two different but, uh, but massive process improvements that you just mentioned. Super fascinating to know the time of the text message had such an effect. Yeah. I'm very curious, although I'm not surprised, there's a lot of interesting psychology that controls our very complex cortexes up there. How long have you been working with Salonis and how quickly did you realize results like that? So, we're probably coming up to our 12 month anniversary at uh, Coventry and Warwickshire uh, specifically. Um, Happy anniversary. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> the second time at Salisbury, so it was about, about this time last year we, we started our journey. Um, in the NHS, we're, we're rolling that out to four other hospitals and working with different organisations, but Coventry and Warwickshire specifically is my role about, about a year. We're, we're very data mature, data driven, um, operationally led. So 
process mining was brought to us as an organisation that says, actually, you're quite good with your data. How can we work with you to improve processes and obviously improve patient experience? So we did that over about an eight-week sprint. Uh, the text messaging came, came quite early on in the process where, uh, where we were talking, how did we not know that? Um, and yeah, we, we bear the fruits from that very quickly. So if we're talking about last September, by the 15th of October, we was uh, full steam ahead and uh, obviously seeing the benefits and reaping the benefits for our patients and our waiting has started to reduce as a result of all of that. So, so I mean, I'm very interested because I, I think everybody looks at it and data is really the key to this or to AI or to where people are going. When you say you were very mature in how your data state was organized, did that really help you get up and running much faster? And is it the same across all of NHS or was it more in a particular hospital and how are you going to deal with that as you roll it out? Uh, uh, I think there is variation uh, depending on what organisation you work at. But uh, nationally, every hospital has to do the same submissions every week, every month, every quarter. Um, so we all know that from a patient perspective, we've got timestamps. We know when patients are being referred into our organisation. We know when patients are being treated. So from a, a holistic view, we are able to look at process mining in that perspective. Where things become um, different, is around maturity, is about health inequalities and being able to look at patient demographics and looking at um, the social demographics of patients and being able to look at things slightly differently. That is, that is a, a, a variation within the NHS, but if we look uh, specifically across the NHS, we all have a, a, a base minimum mandatory requirement to provide data so that we're able to look at the, 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 the wider landscape. So, we are really data rich in the NHS and obviously process mining has allowed us to use that data and become the, the rich data that we've got, how do we then improve patient experience and patient processes because ultimately we all join the NHS to put our patients first. Well, how, how are your patients responding? Have you been able to hear and get that user feedback from folks who were able to get off the wait list, say, sooner or, or come to a visit with their entire family versus five different independent visits? I, I, I think it's that this is a challenging question on, on the premise that most patients want to come in, get treated, and go home. And feedback is always uh, a challenge because it's not necessarily about the process itself, it's more about their care and, uh, and, and yeah. whether, whether they've been. Uh, the, the, the comfort, the, the, it's the individual steps within the process, not necessarily the process itself. I think. We part, partnered with um, Salonis, we did a piece of work around artificial intelligence with IBM, um, great colleagues of ours, where we looked at the, uh, the, the Domino's and Amazon process. So if you order something from Amazon or if you order a pizza, you'll get a reply saying it's in the oven or it's, it's been dispatched. We wasn't doing that for our patients. So when, a lot of our phone calls into the organization was, have you received my referral today? So we used a bit of AI and we used the, the process mining and, and looked at which patients we could receive into our organisation and then just send them a communication saying, actually, we've received a referral. Uh, and, it, and I think it's about having that two-way dialogue with patients. But, but, but a lot of that came from um, user-centred design through our IBM colleagues speaking to the patients saying, what, what would you want? What, what would make you feel a little bit more um, assured about your uh, process? And... It, and ultimately, that's what we're there for, it, 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 making sure that the patient is at the heart of everything that we do. Yeah. Do, you, do you see this, this uh, that proof of concept with the AI that you've done, do you see that being implemented, or how, how do you see that now that you're, cause you're data rich, and I think that's one of the things you have to be to really, mm -hmm. and you understand your processes, and you're mapping and mining those. How do you see AI helping you? And, are you excited about what you're hearing this week as well? So, so I'm a big AI fan. Um, I, I saw something over there. Will it, will it change our planet? Yeah. And, and most people have said it will change it for the better. There's some people who said it changed it uh, to, to the opposite side. I, from what we've done over the last 12 months, I genuinely believe that we could use data AI to improve our uh, patient processes and, and, and people's comfort and day to day um, processes through, through a hospital setting. So I'm really supportive of it. Uh, you know, I, I think 
primarily is about giving the confidence to the people using the service that actually it's not going to impact them as an individual, but actually it might help them through our processes, but it won't impact them in, it, it, you know, people are, people are a little bit skeptical about it, but actually from what we've done, it's pr predominantly back office functions where the, the, the process itself actually improves their patient journey, um, but doesn't directly impact their uh, clinical need or their health. So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm really AI pro, uh, but I understand the, 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 the skepticism around that um, implementation within healthcare and, and how that impacts people. We're, we're very pro with as well, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think, I don't think we can sit here doing this day in and day out. If yeah. we were, I mean, and your example with the yeah. referrals is, is a perfect example of that. I was just, I, the American healthcare system is a bit clunky when it comes to referrals, and often you don't know if you've been referred or not. Occasionally, you're you're informed in real time, but but not necessarily. So that, as an example, is is definitely significantly higher. I'm curious from an internal perspective, and maybe this is invisible, so you can tell me if this isn't something that people are necessarily experiencing the benefits of. You got 1.5 million people working for NHS. How is the reception to Solonis and to the toolkit and the increased efficiencies you're seeing here been? Are people noticing it, or is it just, ooh, something magical happened and now things are a little bit better? And people are turning up. Yeah, I, I, I think that ultimately this is completely new to us, and you, you've got to ask yourself, if we don't do something new or different, how can we make a change? Uh, our chief executive um, is absolutely... Um, data driven and wants us to think about how we can use our data to improve people's lives. So, having that stakeholder group that is from the top in terms of leadership is obviously phenomenal. We uh, internally we've won awards for what we've done in terms of process mining. Um, there's a health, a health service journal which is um, quite a big award in the NHS, and, uh, and we won one of that for our process mining. So. I think it's really important to have the stakeholders and the people engaged. From a data and informatics and a business intelligence perspective, you're talking to people who uh, will write SQL scripts and write code, and you're giving them something new to play with. They absolutely love it. But it's, 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 you know, it's, it's like a Christmas present to them. So it, it's a win-win because actually we're not doing anything differently worse. We're, we're actually doing something differently better for everyone involved, and I think that it, it depends which way you look at it. It's, 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 it's great for the people using it, but it's also great for the people and the population that we serve, I suppose. It's, it's, it's a Christmas present for the data nerds, is what I just heard there, which is, which is, which is <laughs> of, which, of which we all are sitting, sitting at this desk. What advice would you have to both other hospitals as well as, as other nationwide systems similar to NHS who are listening to this and thinking, geez, we don't know when the best data texts are community is or how to group patients and uh, families together for their appointments, what would you tell them? I, I, I got asked a similar question in my talk earlier today and you embrace it. I think that um, you know, we've, we've worked 12 months with Salonis that they're, they're, they're a great bunch of people who are, that they have your best interest at heart. Embrace the process. Embrace learning that you might find something that you don't know existed and also um, if you think there's a problem don't wrap the process mining around it let the process mining find the problem and then wrap the solution and intervention around it that, that would be my uh, view let the process mining tell you where the problem is rather than what you think is the problem let the tool do the tool rather yeah. than try and control it that's, that's actually absolutely outstanding advice I've got one last question for you you mentioned that it is your 12 month anniversary your second fellow sphere what do you hope to be able to say when we have the opportunity to talk with you this time next year that you can't yet say today? Uh, Aston Villa winning the Champions League. Yeah. Ah, ah, we did bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. But, um, <laughs> so, so, well, so this time last year, it was just one hospital. Here we are now, five hospitals. I think if, if this time next year it was 10 hospitals, that would be great. But ultimately, I'm doing a lot of work with the national team around how we can use process mining. It, it, we, we call it the Federated Data Platform. How we can use process mining to improve processes across the country would be obviously uh, where I'd love to be. Because 
like I said before the chat, I'm from Birmingham, so I don't work in, uh, um, I don't live in Coventry and Morrisshire. I work in Coventry and Morrisshire. UHW runs through my veins, and I do that because I want to improve patient care. And if we can do that on a wider scale, you know, I, I want to improve people's lives, and, and, and it doesn't have to be in Birmingham. It's, it's up and down the country will be absolutely phenomenal. So this time next year, if we can double what we've done today, next, then but for me, that's an achievement. Well, Dan, on behalf of all of us here at the Cube and all the lives you're impacting there in England, thank you. And we look you. forward to having that dialogue next time. Rob, always a joy. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fantastic content here at Salona Stellosphere in Munich, Germany. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank you.